What's going on guys? John Alder here from Codemy.com and in this video, we're going to build a language detector for Kinter and Python. Alright guys, like I said in this video, we're going to build a language detector for Kinter. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with thousands of videos to teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off memberships on my courses, videos, and books for one time fee, which is insanely cheap. Okay, like I said, in this video, we're going to build a quick little language detector for Kinter. So you type something in here, click the button, and it tells you what language you've typed. So we head back over here really quickly. We can grab, uh, you know, something in Italian. I don't know Italian. But if I did, and I pasted that in there and clicked it, boom, your language is Italian. So that's what we're going to build in this video. Let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and then Git Bash Terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with over 200 other Kinter videos. So check that out if you haven't so far. So I've got our basic Kinter starter code we've always got. I'm calling it lang.py. And the first thing we need to do is head back over to our terminal and pip install a couple of things. So I'm going to go pip install and I'm in my C GUI directory. You may or may not have a virtual environment turned on. If you're using a virtual environment, you need to have it turned on. So let's pip install and we want lang detect. And this will detect languages. I've already got it. So it's saying, hey, you've already got it. We also want to pip install something called lang codes. And then we want to pass in something called data. So lang codes will allow us to decipher language codes, which we'll see what that is in a minute, and then convert them to actual names. So instead of en, it will return English. Instead of fr, it will return French. So that's what that does. Go ahead and pip install that. I've already got it. So we're good to go. So let's head back over to our code and we need to import those two things up here. So let's go from lang detect. We want to import detect, right? And then we want to go from lang codes. We want to import just everything. And if you want to, you can look up the documentation in these two things. There's not a whole lot of interesting stuff to read in the documentation for those two things. So I'll leave that to you. So, okay, let's come down here and let's just build out our GUI really quickly here. First, I want a text box. I'm going to call it my text and that's going to be a text box. We want to put it in root and I want to give this a height of 10 and a width of 50 just to kind of space it out nicely. And then let's my underscore text dot pack this guy and give it a pad Y of 20. And before we go any further, really quick announcement. I've got a new Kinter book that's about to be published. I'm gonna let you guys know when it comes out and you guys will all get a copy for free if you want the PDF version. So keep an eye on the channel for the next week or so. It should be out about then. Still, uh, it's finished. We're just kind of tinkering a few things and getting it up online and all that good stuff. So uh, watch for that. So anyway, we got a text box. We also are going to want a button. So I'm going to call this my button and it's going to be a button. We want to put it in root. We want the text to say what? Check language, something like that. I don't know. And let's give this a command also of, I don't know, check underscore lang, something like that. We'll create this function in just a second. In fact, if I can come up here and define check lang, we'll just uh, pass for now. And we want to come down here in my underscore button dot pack. Give this a pad Y of 20 as well. And finally, we're going to want a label. So I'm just going to call this my label. And this is going to be a label. I want to put it in root. We want the text to say nothing for now. And then let's my underscore label dot pack this guy. Give it a pad Y of 20 or maybe 10. Whatever. Something like that. Okay. So that looks good. Let's just go ahead and save this and run it real quickly just to make sure that it looks okay. Okay, we got our text box, we got our button. Nothing happens when we click it. Okay, so far so good. So now let's come up here to this function. Whenever this button gets clicked, we want to run some code. So first, I'm going to make sure that we've got something in the text box. So let's go if my underscore text dot compare and text boxes are a little weird to figure out if there's stuff in them. You can't just dot get it and then see if it equals nothing. You have to compare because text boxes put little new line characters in there. So even if there's nothing in there, there'll be like a new line character. So we have to sort of play with that by going end dash one C and then double equal to signs. And we also need a comma here there we go. And then so 1.0. And 1.0 is the first position in the text box, right? So we're basically saying, hey, if the end of this thing is the first line, that means there's nothing in it, right? Even, even if there's a new line character, it'll ignore it or whatever. That's just how we do it. If that's the case, let's go my underscore label 
dot config. And let's set the text equal to a hey, you forgot to enter anything. Dot, dot, dot. Okay, else. What do we want to do? Well, I'm going to break this up. And I'm going to create a variable called code. And first off, let's just grab the language code, right? So to do that, we call detect, which is this thing up here, right? And so detect, and then we want my underscore text dot get, we want everything in the box. So that's from the position 1.0 to end. Right? And that looks good. And then let's just my underscore label dot config, and just kind of set the text equal to and let's make an F string here. And let's type in your language is and then let's just put in code just to see what this looks like. So let's go ahead and save this and run it and see what we got so far. This isn't going to do the trick completely, but it gets us almost there. Let's say my name is john. I can't even spell my own name. There we go, john. <laughs> All right, check language. And it says your language is en. Now, that might be good enough for you if you just need these codes. But these are like ISO character codes or something or other, you can check the documentation if you're interested. But like if this is French, it would return fr. So that's good. But it's not as useful as having it say English or French. And we can make it say English or French by using this lang codes thing that I mentioned earlier. So to do that, let's create a new variable, I'm just going to call it my result. And let's set that equal to language dot make. And then we want to set the language to and now this looks like a capital L, it's a lowercase l sublime just does that with its L's. I don't know why you can see right here, this is a capital L, right? This is a lowercase kind of swoopy, so lowercase l, and we just want to pass in our language code, which is code, right? So then we want to dot, give it a display underscore name. Right? So that will turn this thing right here, the en or the fr or the it for Italian or the JP for Japanese or whatever, and it will change it to the display name of the language, which is, you know, English or French or Italian. So now we just want to pass in this my result right here. So let's go ahead and save this head back over here, run this guy again. And let's say my name is john. Check the language. Hey, your language is English. Uh, if we forget to do anything. Hey, you forgot to enter anything. Very cool. So we could test this out a little bit if we want. Let's head back over here. And let's change this to I don't know, Japanese. So here we can actually copy these characters, bring it over here, paste it in. Hey, your language is Japanese. How cool is that? Right? We could try Swedish. I don't know. Good fun. Hey, your language is Swedish. And it's just that easy. So again, these two things do all the work here. This one right here will bring you the language code. And if you want to look at this uh, documentation, we could just type in Python lang detect, go to the PyPy tutorial. And you could see this uh, ISO 639 one codes, right? So it's it's returning all of these things. And, you know, that's great, if you need that sort of thing. But I don't know, that's not as useful as uh, let's grab this lang codes thing, and look that up as using as using the actual language names, right? English, Italian, whatever. So we can look at the lang codes thing here as well. It does a few different things. If you want to look through here, it will convert more complicated ISO codes, you know, like this instead of just en, you know, all that good stuff. And if you come down here, you can learn about um, how it changes it into actually actual words. So that's cool. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Konami.com where you can use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off membership. So that's access to all my courses, over 50 courses, thousands of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 150,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from Konami.com, and I'll see you in the next video.